Hello, this is George Mazel. I am also known as the Super Magnet Man, but one of the things that I've been doing for the last seven years is I have been teaching a set of classes, and I've been doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one tutoring with students in high school from the 10th, 11th, and 12th grades on the ACT. ACT Science, ACT Math. Being an electrical engineer, this comes natural to us. So one of the things that I want to do is I like to volunteer some of this and let you have an opportunity to learn a little bit about science today. I'm going to give you an overview of how we do the science and the way I do my classes. And then if you have an opportunity to go by your guidance counselor's office and pick up this test booklet over the next two or three days, I'm going to be putting together a review of each of the passages in the science section here to sort of walk through it, give you an idea of what it's like actually taking the test and how you go about answering the questions and conquering the science test. And when it gets down to it, the science test from all the students that I've talked with and all the ones that I've worked with over the last six or seven years, it seems like the ACT is the science part is the most misunderstood. And the reason it is is because many people have taken science. They've had biology, chemistry, and physics and so forth in school. And they're like, I, do, I make A's in those classes. Why do I have such much, so much trouble with the ACT science? And there's a good reason for that. It's because in school, you're testing based on knowledge. You cover chapters one and two, then you take a test on it. You take chapters three and four, have a test on it. So you know what to study for. Your teachers usually give you a study guide. You study everything on the study guide and then you take the test. Well, the ACT has no idea what you've taken. They don't know if you've had AP Physics, AP Chemistry, or what. The whole basis for the science test is about ninth grade science, as best I can tell. It really doesn't require any of the advanced courses. It takes some familiarity with chemistry, some physical principles, and some of the other matter, but not very much in detail on it. It really is very, very heavily steeped in the scientific process. School curriculums where you have been through and you've had labs in all these different subjects and you have a labs every week or two and you get to write the report, you think about the lab, you set the, pro the purpose of the lab up, you determine how you're going to do the lab, you gather your data, you analyze it, and you draw conclusions from it. That kind of a curriculum prepares you very well for the ACT science. So we're going to walk through that process and help you understand it. Mostly, the biggest problem people have on this test is this little thing at the top of my list here, 35 minutes. Many people that I work with tell me if they had a lot more time, they could do extremely well on this test. Well, you're going to find out you don't really need that much time. What the ACT has done is tried to force you in a situation where you don't overanalyze. Many people are trying to think of this as an AP exam, and they really study hard, and they really try and ferret out the slightest little differences between each of the answers. They don't even do that at all. On the ACT, there's one right answer and three that are bogus, and we're going to learn how to read that and how to quickly develop sort of a bulletized thinking. Is it A? Is it B? If it's, is it C? Maybe C. Go to D. Is it not D? Then it had to be C. And you're going to develop this quick thinking process. It boils down to time management. That's how we conquer the 35 minutes is with time management practices. Your time management comes under two areas. One is reading speed. This is physically how fast can you read? Can you read fast enough to get through this test? One of the things you'll notice is during the science part, I talk rather fast. I do it intentionally. If you're able to read along at the speed that I am talking, you should be able to finish the test on time. Many of us have our reading speeds limited by how fast we can echo words in our head. So one of the things you want to practice is talking faster and sort of read out loud to yourself. One of the things you'll find very difficult to do is to read out loud and concentrate at the same time and, and sh change your mind. Think of something else. Try and read out loud and think of something else. It's very difficult to do. So when you're reading out loud to yourself while you're practicing, you're developing the speed skills you're going to need when you actually sit down on that Saturday and take the test. So this is reading speed, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as, as we go through some other videos on it. Decision making. This is the biggest problem. Everybody that I work with one-on-one -on -one, and when I'm working with them in classes, their biggest problem is they can't make up their mind. Why should I move any faster? I think I need to really research this. I really need to study it. Wrong. The test is not designed for you to take all day to make up your mind. That's why you go back to the 35 minutes. The other part is you have a lack of confidence. You're not sure your answer is right and it's critical. You've got to get this part right and you really want to make sure you get it right. So you really are concerned about that. We're going to go through some strategies that help you identify that. Mainly, there's only one right answer, and that sounds kind of, uh, you know, some, somewhat a little bit naive for me to say that since, well, for me it is just one right answer, but I want you to get that, and you're going to learn how to look at those choices and say, it's not this, it's not this, it's got to be this, and you're going to get very fast at making up your mind and have high confidence what you selected is correct. You're going to get to the point that if it's not A, it's not B, and it's not C, it has to be D. You don't even need to read it, because if it's not those three, it's got to be one of them and there's only four choices. One of the things we're going to do is talk a little bit more about the time management at this point. Well, I want you to use this guide for practicing. 
you have one passage that has seven questions on the ACT test. And that question you should be able to do in six minutes. The other passage, the other ones, you have two passages with six questions. You should be able to do these in five minutes. The ones with four passages, you have four passages that have five questions, and you should be able to do these in four minutes. Now, you're going to practice against a stopwatch. If you're going to get better at this and you're going to get faster, you're going to practice against a stopwatch. Passage by passage by passage going through this. If you get to where you can do each of the passages in this time period, you can finish in 32 minutes. Now, most of the time you don't want to do this, but what this extra three minutes allows you to do is if you run into one of these that gives you a little bit more trouble, you don't mind taking an extra minute. But how do you know how to pace yourself if you haven't practiced, practiced, practiced against a stopwatch so that your mental clock is going, I know when six minutes is up, I need to be moving on. I know when five minutes is up, I need to be moving on. Now, for many people, this one passage right here turns out to be the... Um, the one that's always about differing opinion of scientists or it's different theories, comparing two different theories. If this gives you trouble, and you'll know this by practicing, if you do it and every time you miss three or four of these, a good idea is to skip that one. Don't waste time on it. You cannot come back to it and make up for the time that you lost. Skip it. Answer the other six passages. Come back to that one. Look at your watch. See how much time is left. If you feel like you've got enough time, dive in and then make sure you answer it. And if you've got to guess your way out, at least you're guessing out on the one you typically don't do the best on. That's what you want to do. Now, if you do skip it, always make sure you make some kind of a memory to yourself and make sure you get back on track with your bubbling. If it's the third passage and you have to start with number 18, then make sure you jump over to 23 to start bubbling. You don't want to bubble the wrong answers in and have to spend a couple of minutes at the end erasing and re-bubbling re all your answers. So this is a little bit of the overview and this is what we're going to do. If you go by your guidance counselor's office, you should be able to get a copy of this test book. This is the ACT's practice book. This is a former real test given in, I think, 2004 or 2005. We're going to walk through these passages one by one. And the next, I've got, since due to the time limits on a YouTube video, I'm not able to cover it at this point, but there's going to be a second video where I will cover this first passage. And we're going to walk through one passage at a time. I'll read it. I want you to have one, have a copy of this in hand that you read along with me as we read through it. And you're going to get an idea as to how we go about answering these questions. Now, the last thing I want to let you know is everybody always asks me, should I read the entire passage or should I just go straight to the answers and try and look up the answers. In all honesty, I've worked with about three or four people over the last seven years who have been able to go to the answers and look up the, the, the results and the passage and find it and finish on time. All of those people were scoring over 33 on the science alone before they started working with me. So there wasn't a lot I was going to tell them as about how to improve on the test. They're already at the top of the scale. Everybody else that I've worked with does extremely well if they read the passage first. It is critical that you understand the passage. If you spend two and a half minutes reading and understanding the passage, you can answer the questions in a minute and a half. That's not the hard part. The hard part is making sure you understand the passage. As you read through it, you want to visualize what this experiment is. Imagine yourself in a lab doing this experiment or out in the field doing this experiment. And yes, some of these things may be interesting to you and some may not. But guess what? For the purpose of this test, to do your best on it, all you have to do is tell yourself that you like it. You're the only one that controls what you like and don't like. And for a short 35 minutes on a Saturday morning, surely you can make yourself like this to get the scores that you need. Most of the people that we have go through our test on the science, on our, our classes that we teach, and go through the one-on-one uh, -on -one training can see science scores jump five, six, seven points. We've had some nine and 10 point jumps in science because they realized they just didn't understand what the science was all about. And once they understand it, like, wow, this is not hard. You don't try and figure out how you're going to answer three passages in 10 minutes at the end of the test. I don't have a way of managing your, your crisis like this. What I have is a plan that if you follow this and you practice against these time strategies and use a stopwatch, you will not need to finish three passages in 10 minutes. You'll be right on time and comfortably get through. Now, one last little thing when you're practicing on this, do not get in a big, in such a hurry that you're finishing a four minute passage in three minutes and run on because what you may notice is you start making simple little mistakes. You don't get bonus points to finish early. So the four minutes is a good guide. Take four minutes. If you finish early, scan back over. Get comfortable with how long four minutes is. Now, look forward to seeing you in the next video clip where I'll be going over passage one in this test booklet. Thanks for watching.